Hello friends, welcome back to Gator. My name is Vikas and today we are going to study about impulse momentum and collision. Okay, so so far in the video tutorial of engineering mechanics, we have studied about kinematics and kinetics of rigid body and particle. Okay, in the previous video lecture of kinetics of particle and rigid body, we have seen that we can find the unknown fo of forces with the help of either Newton's second law of motion or by the principle of work and energy. Okay, we can find the cause of the motion which is the force or the inertia uh, torque okay now there is a third method by which we can find the force which is the reason why the motion occurs okay the third reason is that impulse and momentum okay impulse and momentum principle help you to find the value of the cause of motion which is the force okay so let us understand what is impulse momentum and finally, what is collision? Okay. And I want to tell you that this is all a part of kinetics. Okay. That is study of motion considering the cause of motion. So firstly, we should understand what is impulse and momentum. Friends. Impulse is any when you apply a large amount of force within a short interval of time that is called impulse. Suppose that I'm clapping. Okay, when I'm clapping like this, then I apply a large amount of force and this force act within a fraction of time. Okay, that is for a small interval of time and that is called impulse. Okay, so and uh, to give a live example, you can say when you slap someone, okay, when you hit someone, then you just that is impulse then force is applied and that is for a fraction of time or a small amount of time so that force is called an impulsive force now suppose that we want to find the impulse for impulse force on a force and time diagram okay this is a force and time diagram so the area under the force and time diagram okay when this changes from t1 to t2 okay then it gives gives you impulse so impulse is force is equal to integration of t1 t2 to t1 f dt okay where t1 is the initial time t2 is the final time and f is the force which is applied and dt is the time interval okay so this is Im impulse suppose that on this area the average force f average is the force acting okay which is found by the area under this force and time diagram so the impulse will be equal to average force into the time interval okay so always remember impulse is equal to product of force and the time okay and it is a vector quantity and has a unit of newton in second okay because force has unit of newton and time is unit of second so the unit of impulse is second now this was impulse or impulsive force now let us understand what is momentum suppose that the motion is taking place in sorry x and y coordinate and this is the force in the x direction this is a force in the y direction okay this is a net force similarly this is the acceleration in the x direction and this is the acceleration in the y direction so we know that f is equal to m into ax okay or f y is equal to m into ay okay and the resultant force will have acceleration of f is equal to m into a okay now this is what we have studied for the rectilinear motion okay now so by newton's second law of motion we know that f is equal to m into a okay now this a is the acceleration and this the value of acceleration is equal to dv over dt so if you rearrange it, this will be come out to be f is equal to m of dv over dt. We can also write it as d by dt of m into v f is equal to. Okay. All right. Now this f is equal to m is equal to d by dt mv. This product mv, this product mv is is equal to rate of change of linear momentum. This is also called rate of change of linear momentum. So, force acting on a particle is equal to rate of change of momentum. This is the rate of change of momentum with respect to time. 
ओके नाउ दे इज अ प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इंपल्स एंड मोमेंटम ओके वॉट इज द प्रिंसिपल प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इंपल्स एंड मोमेंटम वी नो डेट एफ इज इक्वल टू डी बाई डी टी ऑफ एम वी सो इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई डी टी बोथ साइड वट वट इट विल गिव यू इट विल गिव यू एफ डी टू इज इक्वल टू डी ऑफ एम वी ओके सो इंपल्स मोमेंटम प्रिंसिपल से डैट द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ लीनियर मोमेंटम इज इक्वल टू इंपल्स ओके और वी कैन से डिफरेंशियल चेंज इन द मोमेंटम ऑफ अ पार्टिकल ड्यूरिंग द टाइम इंटरवल डी टी इज इक्वल टू द इंपल्स ऑफ द फोर्स एक्टिंग ड्यूरिंग द सेम इंटरवल ओके एंड इफ वी इंटीग्रेट इट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम दिस विल गिव यू एफ डी टी इज इक्वल टू एम वी टी माइनस एम वी वन दिस इज नथिंग बट चेंज ऑफ मोमेंटम और वी कैन से डिफरेंस ऑफ फाइनल मोमेंटम एंड इनिशियल मोमेंटम इज इक्वल टू इंपल्स ऑफ द फोर्स एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इंपल्स एंड मोमेंटम दैट इज द टोटल इंपल्सिव फोर्स एक्टिंग ऑन अ बॉडी इज इक्वल टू रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ लीनियर मोमेंटम ओके नाउ वट इज कंजर्वेशन मोमेंटम कंजर्वेशन मोमेंटम से दैट वन द सम ऑफ द इंपल्स ड्यू टू एक्सटर्नल फोर्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो देन वी कैन से द मोमेंटम ऑफ द सिस्टम रिमेन कॉन्स्टेंट ऑफ कंजर्व सो वी हैव सीन डेट बाई द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ लीनियर मोमेंटम एफ डी टी इज इक्वल टू एम वी टू माइनस एम वी वन and this is the sum of all the impulse force acting on a body if suppose that this sum of all the imp impulse force acting on a body is equal to 0 if this is equal to 0 so this is was equal to mv2 minus mv1 that means we can say that mv2 is equal to mv1 that means total initial momentum is equal to final momentum or we can say that the momentum is conserved okay so when sum of all the impulsive forces acting on a body is equal to 0 then we can say that that the total momentum is conserved now what is angular momentum so far we have said what is linear momentum m into v is called linear momentum angular momentum is nothing but it is called moment of momentum okay now what is moment of momentum when we have multiplied m mass with velocity then it is called momentum suppose that if, if a particle is पार्टिकल मोशन इज टेकिंग प्लेस इन अर्विलीनियर पाथ और कर्व्ड पाथ प्रीवियसली लीनियर मोमेंटम वॉज यूज फॉर द मोशन ऑफ द पार्टिकल और बॉडी अलॉन्ग ट्रांसलेटरी मोशन और अलॉन्ग रेक्टी लीनियर पाथ देन द मोमेंटम इज कॉल्ड लीनियर मोमेंटम ओके नाउ वेन द मोशन इज टेकिंग ऑफ द पार्टिकल इज टेकिंग प्लेस इन अ कर्व पाथ लाइक दिस देन वी नो डेट दे विल बी टू फोर्सेस इन द एक्स डायरेक्शन दिस विल बीवल टू एम इन टू वी एक्स in the y direction it will be m into vi okay so similarly there will be two momentum of this particle in the x direction it will be equal to m vx in the y direction m vy so the net momentum will be equal to m into v we know that so the angular momentum or rate of change of angular momentum is nothing called moment of momentum okay suppose that this is a particle okay and the net momentum acting on this particle is equal to m into v okay so the angular momentum will be equal to m into v into this distance okay suppose this is the distance of the particle from this origin origin is o so this distance od od into mv will give you the total change of angular momentum similarly if you want to find the angular momentum in the x direction in the x direction this is mvx ओके तो रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ एंगुलर मोमेंटम विल बी इक्वल टू एम वी एक्स इन टू प्रोडक्ट ऑफ दिस डिस्टेंस डेट इज वाई ओके एंड इन दिस इज द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ एंगुलर मोमेंटम इन द एक्स डायरेक्शन इन द वाई डायरेक्शन दिस विल बी इक्वल टू एक्स टाइम एम वी वाई ओके दैट इज दिस इज एम वी वाई एंड दिस डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम द एक्सिस इज इक्वल टू एक्स सो प्रोडक्ट ऑफ दिस इज इक्वल टू रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ एंगुलर मोमेंटम okay now the conservation of angular momentum say that angular momentum of a particle about a point is constant or conserved if the moment of resultant force acting on the particle about the same point okay or we can say that the mo moment of momentum at a point shall be conserved if the resultant force pass through the same point okay so if the resultant force are acting at the same point then the moment of momentum is or angular momentum is conserved so this is conservation of angular momentum 
Now, so far we have covered what is impulse momentum and what is the principle of impulse and momentum, what is conservation of linear and angular momentum. Now, in the kinet kinet kinetics, one important topic is collision of the bodies. Now, whenever motion will take place, suppose motion is take, taking place in a body, so after some time two bodies can collide, okay. Suppose two bodies are moving in the same direction and they are colliding after some time, okay. So, collision is also a type of kinetic motion, okay, in which or it is a kinetic phenomena in which two bodies used to impart force to each other due to an impact, okay. So, you know what is an impact when two bodies collide with each other, then the, that, that is called an impact. Now suppose that there are two bodies A and B, okay, and they are colliding with each other. Uh, now so this normal, this the line of action, this normal, and this center, if the center of the body is C1 and C2, body is, center of the body A is C1, and center of body B is C2, okay. Now if we join this line, this line is called line of impact. Line of impact is the line along with the center of the two colliding bodies lies, okay. Now this is called oblique non-central impact. Why it is called oblique non-central impact? Because the center of the colliding bodies are not lying on this line of impact. Okay. If the center of this line of uh, center lies on the line of impact, then it is called central impact. Since you can see in the second diagram, it is the all the center of these two colliding bodies are lying on the line of impact. Though so it is called central impact bodies okay why it is called oblique it is called oblique because the velocities of the bodies are not collinear with the line of impact if the velocity of the bodies is collinear with the line of impact then it is not called oblique or oblique impact okay so we this is a direct central impact phenomena okay in which when two bodies collide directly with each other and the line of x uh, impact their centers line on, lie on the line impact and also their velocity are also lying in collinear with the line of impact then it is called a direct central impact okay now on this direct central impact let us apply conservation of momentum suppose that this body a is having some velocity v a and this body v is moving with some velocity vb okay now after some time if the velocity of a is greater than velocity of b okay then what will happen this block uh, body a will collide with body b okay there will be collision so if there is a collision we can apply conservation of momentum okay so conservation of momentum will be applied okay so from conservation of momentum, suppose the initial velocity of R V A and V B and after collision velocity R V B dash and V A dash. Okay. So they are initial velocities before collision and these are final velocities after collision of body A and B. Okay. So the uh, from conservation of momentum M A into V A plus mv into bv, vb is equal to ma into va dash plus mv b into vb dash, okay. Suppose this is equation number one. Now, suppose I want to find the velocities of these two bodies after the impact. So, this can be found with the help of this second equation. Why? Because one equation cannot be used to solve two unknowns. Here, there are two unknowns, va dash and vb dash, that is velocity of impact after collision for body a and b. So, for finding these two unknowns, we need one other equation and that equation is given by the restitution. This is called coefficient of restitution. Okay, which is nothing but minus ratio of minus times velocity of separation over velocity of approach. Velocity of separation is equal to relative change of relative velocity after collision okay this is velocity of separation over relative velocity before collision okay this is called coefficient of restitution now 
we will be studying three cases when in this impact will take place or collision will take place now firstly suppose that the collision is such that the collision is a elast perfectly elastic collision or impact so if it is a perfectly elastic collision or impact so the coefficient or respiration value is equal to 1 okay so in this case when the coefficient respiration value is equal to 1 and it is a perfectly elastic impact then the energy of the system will be conserved okay that is kinetic energy of the bodies before impact will be equal to kinetic energy of body after impact you should remember this when two bodies suppose they two bodies are colliding when they are perfectly polished body are colliding with each other okay so it will be an elastic collision and in that case the coefficient of restriction will be equal to 1 so if it is equal to 1 it is equal to minus times of vb dash minus va dash over vb minus va so that means the vb minus va will be equal to va minus vb dash so this will be equal that means the kinetic energy before collision is equal to kinetic energy after collision okay so total kinetic energy of the system will remain conserved if it is a perfectly elastic collision always remember that and momentum is always conserved okay so that means for a perfectly elastic collision both momentum and kinetic energy will remain conserved now if it is a perfectly plastic impact or collision then in that case the coefficient of restitution will be equal to zero okay so if it is a perfectly elastic impact then the final velocity of both the bodies become equal and they move together as one body okay so if this coefficient restitution will be equal to zero if it is equal to zero then it is equal to minus vb minus va dash over vb minus va so these two will be equal to equal uh, will be equal to each other so in that case vb dash equal to va dash will be equal to a will final velocity which will be equal to each other okay so if we apply conservation of momentum now so it will be ma into va plus mb into vb is equal to ma plus mv into v dash because the final velocity is same and is equal to this velocity so this final final velocity of impact in case of perfectly plastic impact this will be equal to ma into va plus mb into vb over ma plus mv so do remember if it is a perfectly elastic impact so kinetic energy will remain conserved as well as momentum but if it is a perfectly plastic impact then energy will not be remaining conserved but momentum will be conserved in that case the final velocity of the impact will be equal to this okay now in case of elastic impact there are also again three cases in the first case suppose it two bodies which are colliding with each other are having the equal mass okay if ma and mb are equal and is it equal to m okay so in that case what will happen from conservation of momentum va plus vb will be equal to va dash plus vb dash okay so after if two elastic bodies having equal mass collide with each other then in that case the final velocity of collision of body a will be equal to initial velocity of collision of body b okay so we can say that if two elastic bodies having equal mass collide with each other then they will have they will ex, uh, exchange their velocity and they will be exchanging their initial velocities okay or their final velocities of impact will be equal to the initial velocity of opposite bodies okay so do remember this thing if two bodies of equal mass collide uh, or impact which is uh, each, uh, each other sorry then the final velocity of impact will be reversed and will be equal to the initial velocity of impact now if impact is between two bodies one of the body is immovable and of very large mass as compared to the other body so what will happen suppose in this case case number two a ball is ball having mass of ma and velocity of va is falling on a ground okay and this ground is having mass which is infinite it is saying that one is immovable and now have very large mass suppose this mass is very large and equal to infinity okay and this is immovable so velocity will be equal to zero okay now in this case what will happen the velocity of the body 
b on which the ball is falling will be equal to infinite and velocity will be equal to zero so after the collision the impact velocity of body will will be equal to zero again so in that case the ball having mass of ma or body having mass of ma will rebound with same velocity at which it strikes the immovable body okay so if a body is falling on a surface or another body which is having a large or infinite mass and is immovable so in that case the body a which is falling on body b will rebound itself rebound means the final velocity of impact will be equal to initial velocity of impact and opposite to that okay so that the velocity which with which with uh, it will strike the surface it will rebound back okay so do remember this thing if uh, one of the body is having large mass as compared to other and is immovable so the velocity will be uh, opposite and negative to the uh, initial impact velocity now third case is a case in which a body strikes another body of equal mass and that body is at rest okay suppose that the bodies a is colliding with body b and the velocity of b is equal to 0 okay so what will happen in this case the mass is equal to, and the velocity of b which is at rest is equal to 0 so if we apply conservation of momentum okay conservation of not mass but momentum sorry so where if you apply conservation momentum so this mass is equal so ma and mb will get cancelled out so this will be va plus in uh, velocity of b is equal to zero va dash plus vb dash and if from coefficient of restitution what we will get the final velocity of impact of this body will be equal to zero and the this vb dash will be equal to va okay this vb dash will be equal to zero okay that means if the initial velocity of this body which is at rest is equal to zero okay and a body of equal mass is colliding with this body which is at rest having no velocity so the final velocity of impact of this body will also be equal to zero and the vb dash will be equal to va dash okay sorry the final velocity of impact of this body will be equal to zero that means va will be va dash will be equal to zero and vb dash will be equal to va okay that means striking mass stops after imparting its entire velocity to the mass so that means if a body having equal mass is colliding with another body which is at rest then this body will impart all its velocity to this body okay that means the final velocity of the body which is at rest will be equal to initial velocity of the body which is striking it and this body which is imparting its motion to this body at rest the after colliding with or striking with this body the velocity after a collision will be equal to zero for this body okay so this is all about impact collision okay and we have studied three cases of elastic collision and we have also seen what is in uh, inelastic or perfectly plastic collision okay so this is all for today and with this i also complete my video tutorial on engineering mechanics i hope you have gone through uh, all the topics and if not then you should all, uh, go through the video lectures and practice the numerical because after going through the concept you should practice more and more numerical because that is the only thing that will give you those two marks that i told you in the beginning of or the first video lecture that engineering mechanics although of, of two or three marks but is asked every year in the gate exam and every single marks is important to get your rank okay so do prepare engineering mechanics subject and practice more and more numerical and in the next video lecture i'll be solving some previous year gate questions based on these topics i will try to cover some topics uh, that we, i have covered in my video lectures okay so this is all for today thank you for listening have a nice day